you are one of the like hashtag blessed few who's actually seen the 2020 New Orleans Saints with your own eyeballs in person. Is this, rate this in like greatest days of your professional life? Well, when you put it that way, I guess I should have appreciated the moment more. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, no, look, it was uh, it's a new normal. Uh, very odd, very weird to say August 17th, the first day. Pads, come on, August 17th in a normal, normal year, we'd be well into the preseason phase of camp where we're kind of done with practice and on to the preseason game. So, new normal. Had to get our temperature checks, had to do interviews via Zoom, but uh, we were able to watch actual live football for the uh, 2020 Saints, and uh, away they go. You got to check out Sean's Twitter account. Uh, well, he's got video uh, from practice up as well, at Sean Fazand, Fox 8. I retweeted some of the video earlier. So, uh, you so that's a really good starting point because you said normally we'd be well into preseason, Friday would have been the Saints' first preseason game at at the Chargers. Based on what you're used to seeing after, you know, first practice after the first preseason game, where did this team look relative to where they normally would be? Uh yeah, they're not they're not where they normally would be, which I think uh is to be expected. I thought there were a lot of quote unquote first day I don't know if you call them mistakes, just it just wasn't quite as as crisp in certain areas. Um it definitely had the feel of a uh, of a first day out there with pads on. Uh, it just it, and it was working on base personnel uh, with offense and defense. So that's a little bit more a little bit more vanilla by by nature. So um, if you were if I was trying to maybe compare between this first practice as opposed to a first practice after a first preseason game in years past, I I would it, it would be uh, they'd be much further along in terms of their installation, what they're actually doing on the field, probably. At this point, the execution will be a little bit better as well. Uh, Sean Fazan's with us. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox 8. So let's check some of the boxes that we have to check, right? Okay, let's start with with the quarterbacks. Um, uh, let's just go in order. Breeze, Jameis, Taysom. Yeah, both were out there today. Both look to be in pretty good condition. Uh, both look to be, you know, sort of uh, in, in football mode, if you will. To, you know, Jameis lost. You know, 20, 25 pounds looks really lean out there. In Breeze's case, um, uh, he looked like Breeze, had the accuracy, had a couple throws that got away from him. Uh, it really was only able to see one team period and one uh, one-on-one session. So um, uh, he had his moments, looked like Drew Breeze, as he normally does. Um, Jameis had his kind of the full spectrum of Jameis, just in, in my opinion. He's got, he's got a ton of energy and enthusiasm. He is probably the, the most energetic guy on the field. Um, and he's got a cannon for an arm, and he's got you know kind of a, a high urge to make big plays, to make plays. And I think that serves him well at times. I think it also ser- it can be a double-edged sword. I thought he looked really good in the one-on-one session. I thought he was the best quarterback of the three in that session. Uh, had a couple passes, one to Traquan Smith, one to Emmanuel Butler, which I tweeted out on a back shoulder throw. And then uh, during the team drill, which we were not we were not allowed to shoot, but we were able to watch and observe. Um, I thought his enthusiasm may have got a little bit away from him because he overthrew uh, Jawan Johnson. Ball got tipped, kicked off, and then he tried to hit Emmanuel Butler kind of on a deep ball and just really, really, really overthrew him. So it just felt like energy was maybe a little a little out of control during that team period. And then Taysom uh, had his moments on one on one. He had a, a nice throw. Uh, to Emmanuel Butler as well, kind of on a double move, deep ball, hit, hit Emmanuel Sanders as well uh, on a deep ball. During team, they were a little sloppy offensively all the way around, but the defense got the best of them. But none of the three quarterbacks really looked particularly well uh, during the team period. But, you know, I think it's a little bit of a work in progress just in terms of, at, at this stage, first pad of practice, you probably would expect to kind of have a, a better day than the offense. I think that's kind of where they're at right now. Um of course, people are always going to take a, a want to see the rookies. And with Cesar Ruiz on the offensive line, I know Sean Payton talked about that. But what were some observations that you had seeing Ruiz and McCoy side by side today? Yeah, I, I thought he was he, he did well. Um, I, I did not expect him to be at that at that right guard spot. I thought maybe he would do uh, center and then have McCoy over at the right guard. But looks like they're going to rotate uh, every two to three days. Uh, there weren't any busts. I know there was a. Uh, a sack, but that came off the backup tackle uh, during the team period, back-to-back sacks, so it wasn't from the interior. So, um, without having to fully observe him all day, I thought he, uh, it didn't look like there were any busts from Ruiz, but the important thing is that he is with the first team already as a 
as a rookie, uh, and that's without an offseason. So I do think that's uh, certainly a, a step in the right direction. And obviously, Sean Payton said when he was drafted, he wasn't drafted to be a backup. It looks like from day one, he's going to be a guy that's in the mix for as a starter. Um, right now, it's at right guard, but who knows how that works itself out because you really look at McCoy's body type and Ruiz's body type and his style of play. It certainly feels like uh, those two could eventually be inverted. One, at, you know, McCoy at guard and Ruiz at center. Any observation from Adam Trotman? Not, not nothing in particular that stood out. He had a nice catch during one on ones, and it was obviously plays on routes. I got to tell you. The tight end that stood out to me was Tommy Stevens, just in terms of uh, physically, um, he, he put enough weight on to where he at least he, he looks like a tight end. I know he's you know he's always had you know decent size and height, but to you know put the actual size that you need on uh, to be an NFL tight end, he certainly looked the part. Had a nice catch on a square in from Jameis on one of the team periods. Also jumped off sides during that same period. So. Um, but of those three, uh, of those two, excuse me, Adam Trautman or Tommy Stevens, I actually thought. Tommy Stevens flashed a little bit, and that some of that could be, you know, just by the nature of what they're doing, he was able to just have a moment where he stood out uh, more than Troutman. But uh, I thought Stevens had a at least a decent day and had one nice play. And Zach Bond uh, on the defensive side of the ball, where did they have him running today? Yeah, first team start starting uh, Sam linebacker. Uh, the linebackers were Antelone, Demario Davis, and Zach Bond at the strong side. And obviously, Kiko Alonso is out. Um, and Nigel Bradham is a guy that's going to work his way in. But for now, they had Bond uh, at the first team. So it looked like he belongs. So, and then obviously this, is, this was base personnel. So, um, you know, you don't always have three linebackers on the field. But he was there, and he was playing the Sam. So, uh, again, another draft pick that was with the first team. Uh, Sean Fazan for a couple more minutes. He was there at Saints practice today. First full padded practice for New Orleans. Make sure you follow Sean on Twitter at Sean Fazan, Fox 8. Um, uh, Andrews Pete, I know, was absent today. I saw you tweet that. Any idea what's going on there? Uh, Sean Payton was his usual. Um, <laughs> pretty quiet self when it came to revealing information when it came to injury. So uh, no real update on what happened. Uh, I do know he had he certainly looked, just in photos that we've seen from earlier practices, he looked like he had slimmed up a little bit. Um, also, Josh Hill wasn't there, or uh, Anthony Ciccolo and... Uh, Keno Ellis as well. Um, no real updates from Sean Payton on injuries, which is, uh, quite frankly, I've been doing covering the Saints now since 08. Uh, that is to be expected. Right. Uh, any of the undrafted free agents make any plays today? Uh, well, hmm. None that really jumped out, man. Okay. I know. Yeah, I, I know. No, the way you started yeah. it, it was like it was almost like it was really pensive, like you were about to give me bad news. Uh, no news. No, okay. yeah. Bad news would be bad. I was just trying to get an idea of, of, of if I if I can recall anything, and it didn't really jump out of the top of my head. It's probably not a song that they uh, had, they had anything that really stood out. So um, maybe maybe on Wednesday we'll see something from from the undrafted guys. Last thing for you, uh, what else did stand out to you that I haven't asked about? Uh, defense one day. Uh, I talked about Jameis Winston. Uh, the offensive line uh, was certainly interesting to watch them. Uh, kind of pull up and, and, and see how that, that five settled in, at least for uh, one practice. Um, I tell you a player, now that you mentioned it, uh, from the undrafted ranks, uh, Juwan Johnson. Now, he had the tip pass that led to an interception, but, man, he is huge. Uh, he's listed as a wide receiver. I would not be shocked at some point he becomes a hybrid wide receiver tight end player. And uh, two guys that really stood out is in the secondary today. Marshawn Lattimore had a day. He had an interception and walkthrough, which, Rarely happens. The interception at one on one on a go route from Michael Thomas on a pass thrown by Taysom Hill. And then he had a, a pass breakup on a slant by Michael Thomas, which is not easy to do. And then PJ Williams had the interception and he also had a forced fumble, back to back plays during the team. So I thought if I were giving out game balls for today, those would be my top two performers of the day. Uh, he is Sean Fazan. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at Sean Fazan Fox 8. Uh, good luck spelling it, but I'll retweet it. So, S E A N F A Z E N D E at Sean Fazan Fox 8. Follow him. He's got video up from practice today, a lot of your updates as well. Man, uh, congrats on being one of the chosen few that gets to go like watch at the 2020 Saints. We'll all have to wait till they play Tampa Bay. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I appreciate you putting it that way. Now I feel kind of. Uh... I want to be select one, so I'll, 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 I'll more when I get here Wednesday. You you should absolutely be honored, man. 
Uh, hey, thanks for a couple <laughs> of minutes as always, man. We appreciate you. All right, bud. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.